One day, back in 1939, there was a gentleman by the name of George Danzig, and he was a doctoral candidate at the University of California, Berkeley. And he arrived late for a graduate level class in statistics. And he walked in the classroom and he saw there were two problems written on the board. And so he quickly copied the two main problems down on the board, assuming that they were the homework assignments. So it took him several days as he was looking through it and he wrote down the two problems, he was working on them and he finally completed them. And the next day he dropped the, dropped the homework off on the professor's desk. A few days later on Sunday morning, what happened was he was awakened by an early call. It was from his excited professor. Since George had been late for the class, he hadn't heard the professor actually announce that those two problems were on the board, were mathematical mind teasers that even Einstein couldn't figure out. But George didn't know that. Believing that he was working on ordinary homework, he had to solve not one, but two that had stumped mathematicians all that time. These problems weren't new. See, they'd been around for hundreds of years. And because of the fact that he didn't know any better, he was able to solve problems that even Einstein couldn't solve. You see, he was late for the class. He had no idea the smartest person in the world couldn't figure these things out. No idea. He simply thought they were homework, and he was able to solve them. If you really pay attention to that story, there is a tremendous, tremendous lesson in it. And it's actually a pretty simple lesson. But don't let the simplicity take away from the power of it. And the lesson is really simple that George didn't know this. He simply didn't know it. He didn't know that Einstein couldn't solve it. And so he started from the place of not knowing and was okay with that. And because of the fact that he started off with not knowing, he basically allowed infinite intelligence to work through him to solve the problem. So in other words, he didn't shut it off. He didn't start from the standpoint of, I don't know, I can't figure this out. And by doing that, he was able to touch into infinite intelligence that has no limits, zero limits. In other words, his mindset, and that's the thing I want to talk about today, his mindset believed he could solve the problem. At the outset, he wasn't pre-programmed or preconditioned like his classmates who didn't even try. Because, I mean, let's face it, Einstein can't figure it out. How on God's green earth am I going to figure it out? They were never even in the game. They never even showed up. Why? Because somebody told them they couldn't do it. And guess what? They believed him. They believed him. He was able to solve it because he gave himself a chance where his classmates completely shut themselves off and they weren't able to tap into this thing. Powerful lesson. Powerful, powerful, powerful lesson. We are all connected to that divine intelligence. We all have access to that. Each in every one of us, unless you don't. But guess who gets to decide that? Mm -hmm. Right there. That's who gets to decide that. That's who gets to decide it. When I was thinking about this, I thought about history. How many other times, how many other stories have we heard where people said, no, not so much. I'm not buying into what's going on. And what came to mind, being from Detroit, Motor City Boy standing in front of you, is a story of Henry Ford and how Henry Ford was able to tap into infinite intelligence. So in 1932, Henry Ford was able to do something that had never been done before in the automotive history. 
Anybody know what that is? So you got some automotive people here. I know I do. Car guys. Bill, what do you got? The V8. The V8. Very good. He developed the V8 engine. Now, for some of you, you may say, well, what was the big deal? Well, it was a huge deal because the way that he wanted to do it, everybody out there told him. The experts said, can't do it. All the engineering brilliant minds came together and said, it ain't going to happen, Mr. Ford. And Mr. Ford said what? I don't want you in this group. I don't want to talk to you. I only want to talk to people and work with people that believe that it can be done. And so what did he do? He assembled a small group of engineers together, not at the elaborate Ford engineering plant in Dearborn, Michigan, no. What he did is he went to his buddy's house, Edison's, in a shop down the road called Greenfield Village. A few of you may have heard of that place, right? And that's where they started working on it, in this cramped little workshop, these little quarters, and under his direct supervision, and safe enough from the distance of the experts, as Ford would put it. He didn't want them anywhere near this project, not even near it. It took him a while, wasn't easy. There were highs and there was lows, there was goods, there was bads, there was all of it, but you know what? Ford's vision was on spot. This is what we're gonna do and we're gonna make it happen. And you know what? Sure enough they eventually wind up building, creating, and developing something that had never been created, and it transformed the entire automotive industry as a result of it. These two stories are examples of moments in history where people didn't look at the experts. They didn't look at the status quo and were, that were saying, this cannot be done, right? And instead, they decided to ignore the conventional wisdom, and they left themselves open to pure, infinite intelligence. And as a result of it, they were able to tap into it and do things that were unprecedented at the time. And I'm giving you these stories of these examples, and I'm making it sound grand, and they're pretty cool stories, right? But the truth is, each and every one of us, because of who and what you are, has the same ability to do that. We all have the ability to tap into infinite intelligence. We all have the ability to do that because you are divine. That is who and what you are. You are divine being of God. And because of that, your birthright is your divinity. Unless you say it's not. And no one can make that decision for you except for you. Nobody can. And as long as I'm breathing, and as long as I'm standing up here, I'm going to sit there and do this. And I'm going to poke you, and I'm going to poke you, and I'm going to poke you. And I'm just going to continuously remind you who and what you are, which is this radiant, beautiful, incredible being of light. And I'm also going to remind you that you're here for a reason. Yeah, we got our jobs. Yeah, we got everything else that we got to do. Yeah, we've got all the day stuff that we're going on. But here's what I'm going to share with you. You came down here, right here, right now, because of what's going on on this planet. We need you. We need you. And all you need to do is be who and what you are, which is the brilliant light of God. That's what you are. You don't need to say anything. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to do anything other than be who and what you are, which is this amazing spark of divinity, and let people feel it, let them see it, let them know it, just because of who and what you are. You are brilliant, brilliant. And it's easy. Just be you. It doesn't get much easier than that. Just be you and show up, for God's sakes, right? All of this stuff comes down to your mindset. Any time a situation comes up that you have to deal with it, you have to think about it from this standpoint. Is this possible or is it impossible? That's what it comes down to. It's up to you. And that's the name of the talk today. And I know I had some other name of some other talk, but you know what happens? Sometimes 
when you play with this divinity stuff, all of a sudden God shows up and goes, guess what? You know what you thought you were talking about? You're not. So for those of you that were thinking about, I don't even remember the name of the title I was supposed to be talking about, it changed, as it does often, right? And my hope and prayer today is that you get to take away a few tidbits. That's all I ever hope I do. Something touches inside of here that makes me go, oh my God, and understand something. That is not me. That is the spark within you that's all of a sudden acknowledging its own connection to the divine because we're all connected. And again, that looks differently for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us, it looks completely different. So one of the things I wanna share with you today is I hope you understand that each and every day you get up out of bed and you are a new person. You are, you are a new person. Every day you have a choice on how you decide to show up. You do, but you know what? We don't believe that. We don't think that. We get stuck in this thing called life, don't we? We get stuck in this routine. And we just think, well, I'm assuming that yesterday is going to be just like today. Well, you know what? If you're having a really good time, then keep rocking. Hey, God loves a party. I believe that. I really, really, really do. God loves a good party. So if you're having a good time and life is working for you and you love what your expression is, you love what your experience is, you love everything that's going on in your life by, oh my God, yes, 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 right? But that's not the way it is for everybody. And what happens is, unfortunately, we forget about that connection and then life kind of just gets in a groove, right? And we just show up day after day after day Nothing really changes. Oh, hum, this is life. I guess this is the way it's supposed to be. I have a question for you. Do you really think that's what God wants for you? Do you believe that? And it's okay. There's no judgment if you do. But if you do, poke, 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 poke. I'm going to challenge you on that. Because my belief and understanding is that is not the case. That isn't the way that you were meant to live in any way, shape, or form. That's not the way that God created you. My own personal belief is life is meant to be vibrant, alive, ever-changing, changing, and always open to new possibilities, always. But often what happens is the same old, the same old, the same old, the same old. And we just get stuck in this repetition, wash, rinse, repeat. How many people have ever been in that phase of life before. Yeah, yeah, or now. Yeah, sometimes, and it's okay. Again, there's no judgment that happens. It's just life, you know? You know, Jesus talked about this whole thing of mixing and not understanding and not realizing everything could be different and new and alive and vibrant every single day. And in the New Testament, Mark, Jesus says, anybody, excuse me, and nobody pours young wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst in the skins and destroy both the wine and the skins, right? And he says, instead, put young wine in new wineskins. All right, so here's where it gets fun. Of course, for those of you that went through my Bible interpretation class and the things that I talk about occasionally, in terms of what the meanings of things are, then we go in and do a little bit of Bible, of metaphysical Bible interpretation. We understand what does wine represent? Vitality, new, fresh, life. That's what it means, right? What are the wineskins? The wineskins are our old beliefs. And so what did Jesus say? He said, you don't mix the two. You can't mix the old with the new. And what he's saying is that when you are practicing metaphysical principles, thank you, Charles and Myrtle, and all of those that came before him and those of those who come after. But when you're practicing this stuff, you can't mix your old beliefs about a situation or a problem with your new beliefs. That simply won't work. It just doesn't work. Because more than likely what's happening is when you decide to do your work, 
when you really roll up your sleeves and say, you know what, I'm going to jump in. I'm actually going to start doing this stuff and practice these spiritual principles that the Fillmore's taught. The first thing that you do is you start with your mindset and you start realizing and paying attention to what's going on between here. And what you understand is that there's old beliefs that no longer serve you. And then you make a decision that you can do something about it and you can change yourself and you can change your life. And then you come up with a new belief. And there's a very good chance that the old belief and the new belief don't look like anything that are going to work out. In fact, in many, many cases, they're the polar opposites of each other, right? Yeah, yeah. And I want you to think about it. When I talked about George Danzig a little bit ago, he believed he could solve the math problem versus his fellow students and teacher who said, well, God, if Einstein I can't do it, nobody else is going to, but I'm going to show you this anyway just because. I thought it'd be fun. Think about Ford. He said, yeah, we're going to create this V8 engine, even though the experts said, no, you can't go create the V8 engine. And that's where Ford came up with the famous line that we've heard a hundred times, which is whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Right? But that's exactly what Jesus was referencing, and that you can't mix the old beliefs and the new because they're not congruent with each other in any way, shape, or form. They will not work together. They just won't. Our buddy and friend, how many people are Deepak Chopra fans? Anybody out there? Yeah, there might be one or two of you crazy people in here. <laughs> What's Deepak say? Every time you're tempted to reach in the same old way, ask, do you want to be a prisoner of the past or a pioneer of the future? Whew. That's pretty heavy. And he said, literally, you're making decisions every single day that you're answering that question whether you know you're doing it or not. In other words, unconsciously, your subconscious is running the show until all of a sudden you decide to make it conscious. And until you decide to make it conscious and do something about it, your life is not going to change. It ain't. It's not. Deepak also says, in every moment, we stand in a place of infinite possibilities. Why does he say that? Because Deepak knows who and what he is, who and what you are, and he also knows what we're connected to, which is infinite intelligence. And that's what he's really referencing, is that because of who and what you are, the divine incarnate, that we have the ability to tap into infinite intelligence in any given moment. But the sad thing is, most of us don't. Most of us don't. And what happens is, we wind up looking like Bill Murray in Groundhog Day, and it just keeps going over and over and over and over again, right? This infinite intelligence I'm telling you about, folks, it's real. The Fillmore's talked about it all the time. They weren't just making the stuff up. The people before them weren't just making it up. Buddha wasn't making it up. Jesus wasn't making it up. This thing is real. It is real. It's alive. But you got to believe it. You got to play with it. You got to experiment with it. You got to dive in. Get your hands dirty. Jump in the mud. Have fun. Rub that stuff all over your face. Have a good time with it. Seriously, that's what this whole spiritual journey is about. It's not about being afraid of it. Get outside of those comfortable boxes. I talked about this last week. Get out of them. If they're restricting you, if they're holding your back in your own spiritual journey, ask yourself the question, am I growing? Am I learning? Is this really doing what I want it to do in terms of my life? It's your life, for God's sakes. Nobody else's. No one gets to make that decision. Nobody does. Only you. Only you. We all have within us this ability to tap into, but we, we, we have to believe in it. We have to believe in it and play with it. In the book, Power of Decision, by Raymond Charles Baker, he states the following. Any creation of infinite intelligence would have to be intelligent. Also, the purpose, the plan, and the process of coming into being would necessarily be intelligent. Infinite intelligent? God. His creation would have to be intelligent? You. 
He goes on to say, we are the intelligent result of infinite mind acting with purpose in ways of intelligence to express itself as intelligence in a universe of intelligence. What? That's a lot of intelligence going on, right? We came from intelligence. Because of it, we are intelligence. And intelligence is swirling all around us all the time. Unfortunately, not all of us are aware of it. And unfortunately, we don't always play with it and understand that it's there. It's there. He goes on to say that law and order are as inherent in an individual as they are in the universal scheme of things. We are all the result of universal intelligence. We're the children of God. Ever hear that one before? Ever? Yeah. So the bottom line is that we came from intelligence, we come from God, and therefore we are and have access to this universal intelligence, and this is where we need to start from. We start from this basic understanding, reminding ourselves on a regular basis. And Baker has an affirmation I want to share with you. Why don't we say this together? I think that'd be fun. You ready? I am pure intelligence always acting intelligently. Yeah. I want to hear it one more time. I am pure intelligence, always acting intelligently. Yeah, that's it. You are. You are. And by the way, that affirmation is going to be on the table in the back in case you want to take that with you. It's a really good one. It really, really is. One of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. And so we start off with this basic understanding that we have and are this infinite intelligence. We have access to it, but then what? Then what do we do with it? Is that enough? It's a good start. You have to activate it. You have to activate it. Now, let me just share this with you. There are a lot of different ways to do that. Your way of doing it might look a little bit different than my way of doing it, and that's perfectly fine. No problem, right? but I'm gonna share with you the way that I do it. And if it helps you, beautiful. If not, I would poke you. Go figure out your way, what works for you. Mine's prayer. So I've got a very simple prayer, sounds something like this. Hey God, and by the way, that's the way I talk to God. We're just on a first name basis and it's very informal. He's my friend, I figure, well, if we're gonna have this relationship together, I'm gonna to treat him just like I would a friend, which means that I'm not gonna do all this crazy stuff. I'm just gonna go, yo, what's up? That's how I talk to God. Dear God, I know you're here, and therefore I know a way through whatever I'm going through exists. Thank you for showing me. Thank you. Simple, sweet, to the point, right? Easy. Now, a few weeks ago, I went through the whole entire five-step prayer process that Unity has. Really good practice if you don't have it. If you want to find it, it's online. If you still can't find it, ask me, I'll tell you. Okay? But you can use the five-step prayer process and insert that. Pretty cool. Right? But the key is just knowing that whatever you're doing, the promise, the, the thing that you're working on has already been fulfilled. That's the point behind affirmative prayer that Phil Moore's taught. Right? So how does this work? I'm just going to share something that happened to me over the course of the last week, and that is I had something that happened at work that kind of upset me, and as a result, as a result I fired off an email um, to a few people and let them know the way that I felt about it, right? And of course, after I hit the send button, I slowly find out that there were some things I wasn't aware of in terms of other things that were going on with the situation and made some assumptions that I probably should not have made. Right? I'm human. So one of the people I sent the email to sent a message back and was pretty upset about it, rightfully so. And I sat there and I was like, and, and, and so here I am, I'm sitting in this moment, right? And I'm just a human being and I kept going, but, 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 and then, yeah, but, and, yeah, but, and, yeah, but, and, yeah, and then the more I sat there, more I was like, oh my God, I just created a big fat mess. I did. Right? And so I didn't know what to do. And I was sitting there. 
And so I was at work and all of a sudden this person shows up at work and I still didn't know what I was going to do about it. I had no clue. And understand something, I'm telling you the story based off of hindsight and it sounds, well, sounds pretty easy to deal with, Mike, but it wasn't for me in the moment because I just really didn't know because there was a part of me that wanted to dig in. There was another part of me that was like, this is ridiculous and ever been there? Yeah, good. Just check it. <laughs> So it was in that moment that I just said, well, here's what I know. I know that God's here, and I know there's a way to resolve this, because ultimately, what do I want? I want peace. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to make anybody mad. And I know there's a way through this. And if I can tap in and trust that, I know the answer will come. So what did I do? Is that I literally got up from my desk I saw the person, and I started walking towards them, not having a clue what I was going to do, but knew that I had to resolve this. I need to have the conversation. And I walked up to the person, and I was standing there. And I just looked at the person and said, you know what? I'm really, really sorry for that email. The person looked at me and said, you're forgiven. And that was it. Done. It was over. I had no idea what I was going to say until the minute I stood there in front of the person and it came out of my mouth. Not a clue. Didn't know. And yet, because of the fact that I knew that if I just showed up, that something would show up, especially if I'm tapping into God, my divinity, infinite intelligence, something would be there for me that I could use. And sure enough, God showed up. Right? So, what I'd like to do, have a little fun with you today. Anybody up for a little bit of fun? Yay. All right, cool. All right, so I'd like to do a little meditation. I'd like to take you on a little journey. So I'd like the lights to come down, get the lights down, and I'd like us just to re relax into our chairs. And just start to become still. I always love to start off my meditations with a couple of deep breaths. So if you want to take a deep breath in and then let it out. And then take another deep breath in and let it out. And I'm going to say one more. Let's do one more deep breath in and let it out. And feel that relaxation coming over you. And just start to relax your body. If you need to, just wiggle your finger, fingers, wiggle your toes. Just start to relax. Tell your body to relax. It did a great job of getting you here, but now's the time when you get to just spend a few moments to just be. And the same thing with your brain. Thank your brain for doing everything it does, but tell it it's now time to relax. Just relax your brain. It's okay for the next few moments. You can relax without your brain. And now I want you to imagine connecting. Connecting with yourself to start. If putting your hand on your heart helps you, go ahead and put your hand on your heart. Just connect with yourself. Maybe say good morning. How are you? I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you. And now as you connect with yourself, I want you to imagine connecting with source. Whatever that means for you, you cannot do this wrong. Just imagine you're connecting to God. You're connecting to the divine. Whatever that means to you. But you are connecting with it.
If you have a few words to share with the divine, with God, then share them. Who knows, maybe God, God's got something to share with you. This is sacred ground that you're on. It's beautiful. Being connected with yourself, being connected with source. You are in the land of infinite possibilities. You are missing nothing. In this state, you're perfect, you're whole, you are complete. You are connected fully. Maybe tell yourself, I am fully connected now. And feel that. And then what I want you to do is bring something up that's going on in your life that you're just not quite sure about. You have questions. And now that you have that in your mind, I just want you to say a simple prayer. Dear God, I know you're here. And I know that I'm connected to an infinite intelligence. And I know that the answer to the situation is here. Thank you, God, for letting me see it. And just be still for a moment. Be in the presence of receiving. Tell yourself, I am receiving. I am receiving now. Thank you, God. Thank you. Feel that warmth, feel that love, feel spirit as it does what it does. You don't have to do anything. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start to come back. Maybe you wanna take a few moments and thank God Thank source, thank the infinite intelligence that you are, that you're connected to. Thank yourself, come back into the room, back into your body, wiggle your toes, wiggle your hands, and when you're ready to, you can open your eyes. We all have within us this amazing thing that's magical. It's always been there. It's been in us, humanity, since the beginning of time, and I would say even before that. And it's just remembering that. It's just getting out of our own, own way. It's just removing all the garbage that's been put in our minds and beaten down onto us throughout the history of our own lives and for the history of those that came before us and before them and before them and before them. You are brilliant. Your light shines so brightly. It does. It's incredible. And I'm just going to encourage you to continue to play with it, to have fun with it, to remove those thoughts that tell you you are anything less than divine because that's who you are. So, a little recap. Right? Remember, we started off with this idea that you have the ability to tap into infinite intelligence at any single time. 
do it. Play with it. Who knows? Maybe even have a prayer to God and say, hey, I don't know what this crazy guy was talking about, but it sure sounds like fun. Can I do that? And watch what happens. Watch what happens. Remember, God likes to have a good time. He, she, it does. Really, I'm not kidding. But remember that in order to tap into that, that you have to believe it and you have to activate it. It's not enough just because you're divine. You've got to embody this stuff. The way that you embody it is you practice these spiritual principles that have been taught to us by the Fillmores and others throughout the history. I don't know if you know this or not, but there is some crazy stuff going on on this planet right now. Is, anybody, is it just me or does anybody else know that there's kind of some crazy stuff that's going on here? And with all that craziness, what I'm going to tell you is that behind it, there's also some incredible information that's coming through at this point in time to help us and support us on our own spiritual journey which is what I would say a little bit outside of the boxes. But that intelligence is coming from multiple sources. And what I'm telling you is if you start paying attention, you'll start being led to things. You'll start to see things. You'll be walking in a bookstore and a book will drop in your lap. And you're like, oh my God, what's that? You'll be listening to the song on a radio and all of a sudden you're going to wind up in tears pulling over and going, what on God's green earth is going on right here? You're going to be having a conversation with a friend, and they're going to say something that goes, pay attention. Or you might be looking at some crazy, crazy videos on YouTube and all of a sudden go, oh, my God, what's that? Times are changing, folks. Times are changing. Times are changing. We are on the verge of something that they've been talking about for a long time. It's here. Now, you can go into, oh my God, freak out mode, which I wouldn't suggest. Or you can say, hmm, maybe I showed up here for a reason. Maybe God loves me so much that the stuff that I needed to know wasn't available to me until right here, right now. And maybe if I just open myself up a little bit, I'll start learning some new things that will allow me to go even further into my own divinity. How many people like that thought? Yeah. It's there. It's all there. And it's just a matter of deciding to play or not play. Because just like Ford said, and just like George said earlier in the story, it's just showing up and deciding, is it possible or is it not? And that decision ultimately comes from you, nobody else. Thank you so much for showing up today. Thank you for showing up and being who and what you are, the light that you shine. I'm blown away. This, to me, is the greatest blessing of my life. And I can't tell each and every one of you who showed up today how much it means to me. I mean it on a personal level. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to our friends at Unity of Grand Rapids for coming in and joining us today. We are... Uh, we're excited to have you. So when you walk out these doors today, don't forget who you are, ever. You are the brilliant light of God, each and every one of you. And I personally am so glad you decided to join this amazing thing called life at this time and share your life with me and each other. God bless. <laughs>